Hey Flosstube, this is Tara with Wild Woman Crafts and welcome to my 2023 uh, end of year whip slash finish parade. We did it. Um, yeah, happy new year. I know I'm a little bit behind the ball because I've been out of town if you watched my uh, unboxings through December, but we are back. We're getting back in the swing of things. Um, and right off the top, I know that uh, whip parade season is a great time for folks to, to check out new people and see if they vibe with their projects and their videos. And so I just wanted to give a little bit of an about me at the top in case maybe this is the first time you're joining. So um, like I said, my name is Tara and I live in Atlanta, Georgia with my partner and our big orange cat Fozzie, who has not made an appearance in a while, but has in the past. And um, in my day job, I work in environmental public health. Um, as far as like my crafty journey, I have, I had like a cross stitch kit when I was little, but I got back to it in mid 2020, like so many others. And then I would say in 2021 is when I fully discovered floss tube and all the things on Instagram and just really dove headfirst and have kind of not looked back since. Um, like so many others, I do dabble in a couple of other crafts. I've shown knitting, crochet, a little bit of sewing. Um, and I don't think I've shown any diamond painting, but technically I am working on one very slowly. That was definitely a hobby I kind of picked up and put down pretty quickly. But, um, so I have a couple of other things going, but definitely the primary craft is cross stitch. And today for this parade, we'll be focusing on, on the cross stitch pieces. Um, so hopefully you want to stick around. <laughs> hopefully you find something you like. Um, I definitely tend to lean as if you stick, if you do watch the video through, um, I lean more towards modern styles for sure. I don't really tend to gravitate towards, uh, Quakers or samplers, but you know, I always have an openness in my heart for one of these pieces to call to me. But so far, that's not really been the case, which is all good. Um, there's plenty of room for all the styles, I think. And um, but yeah, definitely tend to lean a little bit more modern, a little bit more like geeky, subversive. And I've also more recently been putting more time into some video games. And so you'll see some of my projects are a little bit of a nod to that. Um, but yeah, if you've been in a long string of whip parades and this is, you know, hour six or whatever, this is your gentle reminder to take a break, hydrate if you need to. You can always pause the video and come back. Um, yeah, so I hope you find something you like. And I'm checking my notes here. Oh yeah, one other housekeeping item I wanted to mention. If you are a returning viewer, I am not in my regular spot. Normally I am in front of this plant stand on the floor, but in the interest of um, my back, because <laughs> sitting on the floor, I tend to kind of like unconsciously lean forward, like really sit forward. And after two hours of that, it um, it's uh, it's bad. So <laughs> I'm going to, we're going to try a new spot today. And I think this will also kind of motivate me. This is a puzzle that's up here that I really want to replace with uh, finished cross stitch in the new year. So yeah, trying a new spot out. If we don't like it, we can move it. But without further ado, let's get into the whip parade. I, I can't believe this is happening. Okay, so I another reason for the change is I can look at the computer behind me as well. So, and it's a much bigger screen than when I was trying to look on my laptop before. So I think it'll all be good, but let's get into it. I don't wanna keep you in suspense. So we're gonna start with the works in progress which actually is kind of at a high count for me this year. I am bringing 17 projects with me into 2024 and um, I have 32 finishes to show you. <laughs> so yeah, normally I, I guess I kind of always think to myself that I, I need to film a whip and a finish parade because I don't have enough whips, but 17 this year, honestly, like a little bit higher than I thought. Last year, I think I had under nine. I don't even remember. I think nine. I'm not sure. But let's get to it. So we'll work whips, oldest to newest, and then finishes also oldest to newest. But yeah, so without further ado. So the oldest whip that I have um, that is definitely on the to-do list to be done this year, we're, we want this finished. We want this finished for sure, is my 
Twisted Rainbow Sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. Um, it's a doll. I love it. I love it so much. Um, this was started on June 11th of 2021 as like a stitch for pride, I think at the time. Um, and it is, I think over halfway done or we're like right at that halfway point. Um, so yeah, I'm using the Dinky Dye Silk Pack and this is stitched on 28 count uh, even weave. I don't remember if it, I think it's a Jobelin. Oh, it is Jobelin. See, look, I can read it on the computer. This is great. Let me make this big here. Um, so yeah, this is stitched in silks, uh, one over two for the crosses. And then obviously the specialty stitches are kind of their own, their own thing. It's like, we got to keep it moving. This is going to be a long time. So my second, um, oldest works in progress. The only other one from 2021 is uh, Dinosaur Forest by Al Forest Embroidery. And I might put the, uh, I guess I didn't really think through, I don't think I have pictures for all of these. Um, let me back up. I, I know I don't have one for this one, um, but I'll put it over my face, hopefully. So this is, yeah, uh, Dinosaur Forest by Al Forest Embroidery. Um, I bought this as a kit um, before it was tough to get kits from Russia. And um, so this is like the kit fabric, which I think is a 28 or 32 and the Owl Forest um, flosses, which are lovely. And this is one for sure. I actually just um, that if it doesn't get a lot of work this year, we might have to consider a UFO situation because it's been a minute. It's been a minute. And also, I have my bags around me, so I'm hoping to kind of rebag these as we go. But who who is to say? We're just trying to contain some of the chaos. Okay, great. So that is that. And then um, my next oldest whip is from September fourth, twenty twenty two which was my birthday. This was my birthday start. And I want to tell you, there's a lot of threads happening here. It's looking pretty rough. <laughs> but this is my uh, Heaven and Earth Designs, my one and only. This is The Astronomer by Miles Pinkney, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And here is where I am at with that. Um, my goal for the year had been to get this to 10%, but we are under five. So that did not happen, <laughs> but that's okay. It's all the process. I'm hoping, I feel like this new phone camera is not the best at like balancing. So hopefully you're seeing this is a pretty dark piece. Maybe if I move my face, um, but yeah, so we're up on the top left and this is the top of the telescope here, the first little lens. And this is on a uh, 25 count easy grid and it's being stitched one over one full cross. Why, why did I choose this? We don't know. <laughs> um, perfect. So next up is, uh, sorry, I'm gonna grab the pattern for you. Is Life Potion. Oh, the magnet is stuck, there we go is Life Potion by Forbidden Fiber Co. And this was from uh, the 2022 Halloween box. Um, and it has the, I'll read it here. I've read it a lot. But, um, this is from the movie Hocus Pocus. It says, bringeth to a full rousing bubble, then add two drops oil of boil in a dead man's toe. Next, add a dab of newt saliva, dash of pox, stir thrice, one final thing, and all is done. Add a piece of thine own tongue. Um, and so this, you know, <laughs> watching some other uh, floss tubers, I think it's Julian Stitches that says, um, hashtag free the floss, that like you got to finish projects so you can open that floss up for use again. And I feel like this is a free the fabric situation for me. I don't want to cut it um, until I'm done. And uh, I want it back. I want it back. I try, I think the words will go quickly, but you know, this cauldron is obviously very big. This is a 40 count 
um, from Forbidden Fiber Co. in the color Sanderson. And I'm stitching this one over two. And yeah, it's just a really big cauldron and that candle is huge on the other side. So I'm kind of like, I don't know, maybe I need to do the word so it feels like I got more done because I've been slogging away at this cauldron um, when I have had this out and it doesn't feel like I'm making much progress. <laughs> it does not. Um, but we we keep at it and that's in, I, I don't know. I'm never consistent about the mention of needle minders and bags, but this one is a Forbidden Fiber Coat one that came with the, the kit as well. Love it. Um, so yeah, that was a uh, start on October 1st of 2022. Hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. Perfect. So, uh, well, there you go. So I have two, two starts from 2021 and two starts from 2022. So now we're on to 2023 projects. So I'm not too bad. I just started, I don't know how this happened. Like I, <sighs> I was looking over my numbers. I started 40 things in 2023. What is that about? <laughs> a lot of them were small, but I just didn't really identify with that number. And yet there it is. So anyway, next up, <laughs> sorry. Um, this is from the inaugural mislaid pages, uh, February burb box, B I R B. And uh, this was one of the three charts that was included in the box. This is Michelle Bendy's pocketbook Peacocks. Um, love this. And this is actually from like an old purse, I believe. What did she say? Yeah, from an antique needlepoint. Um, but so the original colors are nothing like this. The background fabric is nothing like this. This is absolutely the fabulous version of that purse. So now I can do, I can do older style just, you know, with a fresh take. So, um, this was all material supplied from the box. So this is mislaid pages, 32 count linen in awakening and all dinky dyes, um, silk and the needle minders from the box as well. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, I wanted it on the side since my cut, this is kind of the only splash of like the reddish you got. So I wanted it over there, but this is great. So like I said, I gotta like, I want these fabric options. <laughs> and I don't know, I guess I'll just kind of show you bags that I think are fun. So far, they haven't been super fun bags, but so this is a, this is in this very fabulous bag. Um, from the Black Needle Society under their Love You More name. So we got all sorts of mythical beasts on there. Very fun. And that was a start on February 10th of 2023. I didn't start anything until February in 2023, which is kind of interesting. And then I got myself into a whole heap of trouble at the end of the year, but it's all good. Okay, so next up on February 22nd of 2023, I started um, Park Hopper Bart's Bonaventure Cemetery, um, which I think inside the chart, I think it's actually called the Bonaventure Morning Sampler. Um, this was in a box from Fangirl Fibers, the Halloween box that was like 31 Days of Haunted America. Um, I love this. And this was a really special start this year because my friend had her... For her birthday wanted to go to savannah georgia and that's where this cemetery is so i actually started this piece in the cemetery that is pictured um we kind of tried to look for like the columns that are pictured here and i found several archways i don't know if he like specifically designed it to look like one specific arch but that was really cool so that was a special start this year for sure this needle minder was from the box as i like long romantic walks through haunted houses and this is not a significant start, but there it is. And this was kit fabric as well. This is Fangirl Fibers. I, it's either a 28 or a 32. I think it's a 32. Um, I don't remember at this point. <laughs> but, um, and that is living in an 805 stitcher bag. Love it. Um, with all DMC. That's If I don't mention thread, just assume it's called for DMC. Try to pack this up. So I did iron everybody, but 
they're gonna have to go back in <laughs> to these bags. Okay, perfect. So next up, we have um, from August 24th. Uh, this is from the Pirate Stitch Box from Starlight Stitchery. I'm really exposing all the boxes I buy. <laughs> Um, I do love a box. That's another thing that if you stick around, I, I do like a box. I don't, I'm not always consistent about showing the unboxings, but I, I do be buying them if you have questions. <laughs> um, so this is Michelle Bendy's Pirate Quaker. So see, I got a Quaker. At least I just like a fun, I like a fun Quaker. Um, and this is my progress on it. It's really not that big. It really shouldn't be in the whip pile, but what are you going to do? Um, so yeah, needle minder was from the box and this fabric is a used <laughs> piece of fabric, which is 36 count cafe misto by fiberlicious yummy fibers. And, um, I slightly regret this choice because the white is just like really not showing up, but I think it fits in with that kind of, you know, older school look. It looks a little more aged, a little more faded. Um, yes. And this uses all of the threads that came in the box, which were all um, Forbidden Fiber Co. And this was started, yeah, August 24th, I said. Okay, perfect. And this is living in a gorgeous bag made by Laura Landis of the Black Needle Society. Um, and I won this, like, as a prize at the at a Gilmore Girls Retreat last year. <laughs> um so squishy. I love it. I love the dragonfly. It's great. There you go. I can show bags. I can do it. Perfect. So next up, um, on August 31st, I started, I don't have a picture of this uh, chart, but it is um, just called Tea Glass Pattern by Jubilee 8 Pixel, or maybe it's just 8 Pixel. I never get it right. Um, this is a pattern my friend picked out that she really wanted to stitch, but she, um, struggles to stitch she has a lot of like hand and wrist pain so I'm stitching it for her <laughs> and this is on a 16 count Ada from like Michael's that we uh or from Joanne's I think that we dyed ourselves um to look like the background because I don't want to stitch all that background <laughs> um so yeah, and this is where I am. And this actually got an unprecedented amount of work uh, in October because I was participating in a like stitching challenge for uh, Black Needle Society again. And that was a humans versus zombies game. So this was a great like fill in section for speed stitching. Um, so I got much more of this done than I planned. And I knocked out a lot of that white that I'm sure I would not have been thrilled to work on before. And this needle minder I got in an exchange. I believe it's from Ginger Stitch AU. Oh no. No, I don't think so. Cause I bought this same or no. Yeah, I think it's from Ginger Stitch. I got it from Liz, <laughs> Stitch by Liz. Um, and yeah, it's living in just kind of a basic, a basic bag that I actually got. I think this one's one of the ones I got from the container store. <laughs> They sold these, they're like slightly smoother than a lot of these bags, but yeah, it's Container Store Marie Kondo, if you're in a container store. Perfect. So then now everything else is seasonal starts that I had. So this year I felt motivated for whatever reason to participate in the both the 13 stitches of Halloween and the 12 days of stitching, which is like winter... Um, Christmas theme projects and I didn't really have a lot of seasonal things on the go because I had worked to work that down and so almost all of those pieces were new starts. I did try to focus on small so if you stick through the finishes you'll see that a, a good chunk of them got done but a lot of them did not. <laughs> so from here on out it's seasonal. So first up is uh another bendy stitchy i definitely am not a person that abides by the like one designer at a time <laughs> um or you know one like only has one 
piece on the go from a given designer at a time. But this is Winchester House, which was also from the Fangirl Fibers Haunted America box. But all of these, it's been long enough that I'm sure you can, you could just purchase these um, from their respective designers. But yes, Winchester House from Bendy Stitchy Designs. And here she is. <laughs> I did not get much done on this at all. It's fine. This is again fabric from the box. So it's either that 28 or 32. It's DMC. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. Uh, this is living again another 805 Stitcher bag. That's on that. Clearly for Halloween and uh, the winter season next year, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to work on the projects I already have for 12 days as opposed to starting 13, 12 things. Next up, so yeah, that was, uh, October 15th, October 28th, I started, um, this out of here. I started... Salem Sisters Apothecary by Primrose Cottage Stitches. I've seen this one going around a lot. It's very cool. And I actually just purchased um, this board. So I will be able to finish it um, like the model. I really loved that model finished. Um, so here it is. And this is stitched on 32 count doubloon by Picture This Plus. Um, I really like the look of it and I am using the, uh, it's a monochromatic piece and you can see I have a pretty good little variegation on there. So this is Shades of Grey by, um, <laughs> it's gonna escape me. Uh, this is Shades of Grey by Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers. There we go. And this needle minder and the bag that this lives in were a sweet, sweet gift from uh, my friend Shandria, um, who is now Shandria Carol Stitches on YouTube. I will link her and she's amazing. So I'm really excited she's on YouTube now, but she stitched me this, this bag. Friendship. So, oh yeah, here, I'll show you. I do want to brag about this thread. So yeah, here's the the shades of whoop, shades of gray. Um, so yes, really, really liking that one. And that one is, it's just not that big. <laughs> Famous last words, right? Um, I think I put this in pattern keeper and I, I think I'm like 25% done even with just that top bit. So I think definitely the focus for the, during the holiday season will be to press on with things we already have, not start new things. Awesome, so those are the only remaining Halloween whips. So we are tearing right on, oh wait, lied, lied, lied on November. On November 4th, I couldn't help myself and I started Autumn Lane Stitchery's Evening Stroll, which this came in their Halloween box this year. Um, so I don't think this is out yet, but you can look for it next year. And the box came with the frame and the little easel it's on and all the finishing materials, um, which is fantastic. And here she is. So it's going well. It is full coverage. Um, so we're not done, but, <laughs> but it is going well. Um, and this is uh, an 805 Stitcher Needle Minder. It matches that other bag I have. So, yep, all DMC. And this is a beaded kit. It's like a Mill Hill, so it will have beads. Um, and it's just chilling in one of these little cheapy plastic bags from, I think I got this from Two Three Stitch. So that was the last of the Halloween patterns. <laughs> so next up, is another autumn lane actually oh wait yes another autumn lane uh on november 10th so i tried to preload starts uh so that when i was working on 12 projects in december they weren't all starts um so i started autumn lane stitcheries to all a good night 
Um, I love this so much. Um, all of the white in this piece is the fabric. It is not stitched, as you will see. So this is how far I got. Um, and this needle minder, I freaking love. My family is originally from uh, Louisiana. A lot of my extended family is still there. So um, we have Santa on his pirogue with his little alligator um, <laughs> reindeer, which I love. As a child, we used to read The Cajun Night Before Christmas as well as the um, Night Before Christmas poem, the classic poem. But anyway, so you can see um, how some of that illusion is going to come together. So like this is the bottom of the tree and it, these gaps look like snow sitting on a tree. And this whole section right here is not stitched. Um, it's not really coming up in this light, but this is an opalescent white. This is 28 count linen that is opalescent white. I thought, I thought for a second I had potential to like get this done over the holiday season, but nope. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and then this is living in a big, uh, little women bag. Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents. Um, and this was from the Black Needle Society. Could definitely get a theme of where I'm shopping and what boxes I'm buying. Um, okay, and then November 19th, in a Love You More Studio sleeves, Willy Wonka, little Wonka bars, I started Lindy Stitch's uh, Silver Bells. And, oh yeah, oh, here it is, <laughs> so where did it go? Um, yeah, I started Silver Bells and here's where it's at. Um, so we're in the tail, feather, tail feathers and I have one here. So the tail feather color, colors, these three colors that you see here are Forbidden Fiber Co. and the rest of the piece is in DMC. So um, there's that and this is stitched on, um, 32 count frozen by Forbidden Fiber Co. And even though this came in a box, I'm pretty sure this is a standard uh, color for them. So I'm pretty sure you can get your hands on this. Um, but yeah, loving that. And then Needle Minder is a Black Needle Society one from a, an autumn box, a September box a year ago. I feel like a pop quiz. <laughs> like I treasure so many things from those boxes. So I try to remember where, when and where they came from. But yes, loving that one. Another one that's like pretty small, should probably have gotten done, but we just were doing too many things, too many things. Next up, uh, November 26th. Now we're into a couple things that are still in frames because we're getting to stuff that's been really recently worked on. I started Mary Meow Miss Biscornu by Stitchy Prose. Um, so this is for little cats um, in different kind of attire. So there's kind of like a Santa cat and a reindeer cat and a gingerbread cat and then a snow cat, little snowman, snow lady cat. Um, and here's where I am on this. So I started at the top of the Biscornu and kind of the dividing motifs. This is a Autumn Lane Stitchery Needle Minder I got in a Black Needle Society box. And this is um, vintage 32 count vintage country mocha Lugana. Um, that this little off cut was perfect <laughs> um, to stitch this on. So we're making progress there. And I have the companion piece. Uh, there's a companion Biscornu that is Halloween themed and I stitched that one last year. So that's, I was really excited. And this one's living in another one of these Marie Kondo bags. Three left, <laughs> so fast, so pain-free. <laughs> uh, so next up we have on December 9th, I started, uh, Frosty Winter Mouse in a House by Just Nan. 
So this is the finished piece. Um, so basically there are six parts to this house because there's four on the top and then there's a square on the bottom that is a rug and then an exterior. So there's four four triangles, two kind of biscornu sized squares, and then the seventh chart is for the little mouse. So I, oh here, I guess this one kind of shows it better. Um, so yeah, these are all the little pieces. Um, so I am starting on the rug. And this is still on a frame. So I am stitching this on 32 count even weave in basalt splash um, by Zweigart, I believe. Let me double check here. Yeah. Um, yes, by Zweigart. And um, I'm stitching, yeah, two over two. And we have started started the process of this. So this one's going to be a while and it's going to be quite a assembly process, but it is smaller than I thought. I was worried these squares were gonna be a little bit bigger, but I think they're about like 45 by 45. So not that big. <laughs> and obviously the squares are the biggest pieces. The triangles will be even smaller. So we'll be at it. It's all DMC. Um, and this is living in a me made bag with a me made cross stitch. So this is a hands-on design um, piece and this, uh, these materials were sold as like a finishing for, for this. So I finally put that together this year. I'm really proud of myself. And this was technically my first go at quilting. I quilted the back a little bit. Um, so yeah, there's the little inside lining. Very cute, very fun project. Um, trying to boost up those sewing skills. <laughs> um, Perfect. So that was our first start that's still with us in December. And then we have two other itty bitty little starts that need to be done. <laughs> so this is in a, another book sleeve bag. Um, this one is from the Gilmore Girls box of last year. I live in two worlds. One is a world of books. We've got the dragonflies for the dragonfly in and some of I think, Rory's favorite books. So this is a Mill Hill kit um, that I would love to have a picture of. Here we go. This is Snowman Globe. Um, so this is stitched with kit materials on perforated paper. My mom didn't believe this was paper, so I tore it. I showed her. <laughs> I don't know why. It's fine. Um, and this uh, needle minder I don't know if it's from a needle who runs through it. I don't remember, but it is from uh, a Black Needle Society box. Um, one of my favorites for sure. Christmas story is one of my favorite Christmas movies. So making good progress there. These Sometimes I find these kits hard because you think like, oh, it's just a ton of white, but you have to leave so many gaps for beading. <laughs> so many gaps, but um, yeah, so we'll keep going, keep going on that. And last but not least, on December 27th, I snuck in one more little start. And on top of that, I thought to myself, oh, this would be a great time for me to try to learn about stitching in hand. Um, and that's going very slowly for me. But this is Ink Circles Swedish Neat Bells. I got this at the Jingle Ball last year and finished this uh, candelabra in class, but I wanna have the whole set. So, and I have the materials to finish the whole set. So definitely wanna do that. So we are working on the reindeer. And so here it is. Um, like I said, I am certain I would have been done if I had just given up and put this on a frame, but I'm really trying. I think part of the reason that this is paining me so is this is stitched on 36 count platinum Edinburgh linen, Edinburgh linen. And I feel like stitching in hand, I finally understand why people, um, why some floss tubers who complain about like the puffiness of stitches on 36. I wonder if it's an in hand thing because when I stitch in a frame, it just really doesn't bug me. I feel like I like the look of it. Um, but stitching in hand, it feels very bulky. 
So just some insight. I don't know if anyone else uh, can relate to this, but I'm going to power through. It's small enough. You know, you're not going to get better if you don't practice. So, <laughs> um, this is my, yeah, my practice in hand piece and I really like it. And so this is just 310 on the outside, but the DMC is in classic color works, uh, DMC, the reindeer is in a classic color works. And I believe it's Jakey Brown. I'm not sure, let me see. I will look this up for you. You might not care. Wren Reindeer. Okay, it doesn't say. I think it's Jakey Brown. I stand by that. So yeah, that is, that takes us right up to now. So I do not have, I've not started anything in the new year, um, even though I do plan to maybe start one tonight because um, if you want to pop over after this to my um, floss tube, which might, you know, you might have to wait. It might not be up. This is going to go up first, I think. Um, I will share with you plans and things like that. And so January is going to be a busy month and um, I got I got a couple things that got to get started like this weekend. So, <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. Oh my gosh. Um, so now let's move over. Now I feel kind of silly that we're doing finishes, but we're going to power through these. We got this. It's only 37 minutes. What kind of whip parade is only 37 minutes? So um, if you were just here for the, the whips that you, you saw it, you did it, you can check that off and, and keep, keep moving on to the next. But I am going to show you my finishes for the year, which is also going to expose how little fully finishing I do. <laughs> and I'm hoping this will motivate me as well to look at these to look at this pile and be like this is sad these should all be not all but a lot of them should have had something done to them by now so let's jump over and do that okay so let's run through some finishes like i said we're gonna go um oldest to newest and to start off the two first pieces i have to talk about are um not with me they were given away so on January 5th of 2023 I started on January 5th and finished on January 7th uh Paw on My Heart by Georgia Girl Stitching or maybe over here by Georgia Girl Stitching um my sweet friend um lost a beloved dog um had to put a beloved dog down her family did um and so this was kind of in remembrance of him and similarly on uh, February 8th and finished on February 8th, I did pause and plaid, um, and gave these to her and her mom respectively for that time. So that was, um, that was really nice. I think she had just come out with those. So the pawn my heart, um, was on like one of those 14 count pre-framed Ada pieces from Michael's and then the pause and plaid, the smaller one, um, was stitched on 32 count, uh, platinum Lugana by Zweigart. Let me double check my computer here. Perfect. Okay. So next up, um, so <laughs> I actually have these a little bit out of order, but that's okay. Um, we'll get to it later. It's just like on a piece of fabric that I have in the bottom of the pile and I'm not going to go get it. We'll, we'll get there when we get there. So skip that. There was a, <laughs> I had a finish on Valentine's day. But next up, uh, I had Christmas Pin Pillow. And this was started um, December 5th of 2022 and was finished uh, March 24th, 2023. So this is Christmas Pin Pillow by Kathy Barrick. It is on a 36 count linen with all the uh, called for materials. I got this in a box. Um, I finished this sloppily, don't look at the bottom, um, <laughs> into a pillow. I had some like nice cord fabric here and um, this trim is from a pack I got at Michael's. I may rip this out and hand sew it closed because it is kind of bothering me, but it's my first attempt at putting trim on a pillow like this and I really like the, the 
finished piece. So that was up next. Then on February 14th, since I had the finish, I started uh, Zelda Biscornu by The Needle and Floss. And this was finished on March 27th, 2023. So they're in order of like start date, not by finish date. Um, so yeah, March 27th, 2023. And this is stitched on 32 count linen in ballet slipper by Fox and Rabbit. I love this. So this is a little homage to the game, The Legend of Zelda, specifically the Ocarina of Time, I believe, kind of the older look. It's very like pixelated. So we have like the shields, the little fairies, the navis, the triforce, little rupees, the two and a half hearts, because you got smacked, very relatable. We have the Master Sword and some of the other rupees on the back, um, which are like the currency in the game. So love that. This was my second Biscornu I had ever stuffed. Um, but yeah, really cute. It's got a little button from Michaels in the center. Next up uh, was a Bird Crush Club finish that was started on August 21st of 2023 and was finished in April, on April 26th, 2023. And so this is the Lewis's Woodpecker by Lindy Stitches. This was, yeah, the August bird, the eighth bird in the Bird Crush Club series. And um, yeah, it's just in DMC, but this color right here is a Threadworks um, to get that nice variegation and it's stitched on 32 count vintage country mocha. If you go through some of my other videos, um, the Bird Crush Club was a series of 12 birds and they had all different called for fabrics in the series, but I ended up picking three fabrics and stitched four birds on each fabric. So vintage country mocha was one and you will see the other two as we go along because I worked on those as well this year. Um, but yeah, this is one of the fabrics from the Bird Crush Club. And I love, I mean, what a funky bird. I want to see this one in real life a lot. This one's got that divorcee energy. <laughs> um, excellent. So next up on April 26th, I started Spring in Stars Hollow by Catherine Landis. And that was a finish on May 5th. Um, that is not all of this. <laughs> That would be pretty dang impressive. Um, so this, when I say spring and stars hollow, I guess I could fold it over a little bit. Um, that is in reference to this part of the piece. So like the half of the guitar over. So this was part three in a four part series that is a homage to Gilmore Girls, um, which is sort of like the seasons in stars hollow, which is the fictional town. So on the far left here, we have um, Autumn in Stars Hollow. Then in the middle, we have Summer in Stars Hollow. And in, uh, on the far right here, on my right, we have Spring in Stars Hollow. Um, so there's tons of homages here. Um, I won't spend too much time going through them all now, but if you're a fan, it is very cute. And you can see we have kind of the lyrics running through. So we have, um, yeah, if you need me to be with you, sorry, it's kind of long, I will follow. And then this year in March, I will have the grand finale. I will have winter over here and it will say, um, where are you lead? <laughs> so very excited to have this one, uh, done this year. I, there's a virtual retreat um, with this, which is why I got so much done in a short amount of time because I was uh, doing retreat stitching, uh, virtual retreat, which is where I think you actually get stitching done as opposed to in-person retreats where it sounds like you don't get all that much done. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I got like 92% done during that long weekend. It was like from Wednesday night to Sunday. So my goal this year, I'm going to see, my stretch goal is to see if maybe I can finish the whole chart during the retreat. That might be a big ask. And then, yeah, so as, so this is living in a Gilmore Girls bag. So this is from the summer one. Roll out those lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. Those days of soda and pretzel and beer. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna roll this up and put it in there. 
And if you're nervous, I'm nervous too, that it's gonna fit. I've measured it approximately 600 times, <laughs> but I, I am also in suspense of like, I need, I need the last chart and I need to start so that I can do that. And that's all in um, DMC, but then all the background colors, I use the Forbidden Fiber Co conversions. Love those. Awesome. So next up is actually another Katie Landis, Catherine Landis chart. This is um, Santa's stamp collection. So this was a start December 1st of 2022 because it was a December stitch along that they announced December 1st. <laughs> so I started it the day it dropped, but I did not keep up with it. Um, I tried really, really hard and I was proud of myself that, um, it's kind of hard to see, but these are stamps. They do have outside borders. So I had by the end of the month on the 25th, which is the last stamp down here, I had all of the stamp outlines and the numbers, but I didn't keep up with the fill in because some of these like, you know, are really thick. Like, I mean, this was 1200 stitches in and of itself. So that was just not daily stitch stitchable for me, plus with the, the border on top. Um, so this is on, oh, and I guess I didn't say last time, but it is just like a plain white. I'm on a 32 count white Lugana for Lugana for the Gilmore Girls piece, but this is on 32 count um, plush by Fortnite Fabrics, which was included in the box, all DMC. And I finished this um, with some fabric and interfacing and these kind of magnetic frames. So this will be swappable. So I hope to have some other pieces to hang now that it's, you know, no, no longer this season, this can, this can go away and I can, you know, reuse the frame for, for something else maybe. Um, right. And that was a finish on May 1st. No, May 10th. So after I finished Gilmore Girls, I guess I was like, let's get to it. <laughs> so May 10th. So next up, following the Gilmore Girls retreat, several of us started um, one of the Lola Crow uh, Kraken patterns. There's a couple. So this is Moonlight Kraken um, by Lola Crow Cross Stitch. And I started this on May 11th and finished it on May 18th. And this is 32 count opalescent Lugana in black pearl by Jody of the Steel City Stitchers. It's gorgeous. This is another one where I'm like, please deal with this so I can get this fabric back. <laughs> I just don't like to cut things until it's time, until it's time, until they're really done. So love this. I don't know if you could see. Oh yeah, you can see some of the shimmer. The shimmer shimmer. Love that. And you, yeah, you don't have a home. <laughs> so like, you grab things that have bags. Um, perfect. So next up, this was just such a stretch for, for Katie Landis here this year. Uh, I had a May 22nd of 2022 start on this. And it was a finish a little over a year later, June 24th of 2023. This is Must Be Possible by Katie Landis. Um... This is fantastic. This is kind of my first big like word art um, piece. So this is a quote from Agatha Christie down at the bottom. It says, the impossible could not have happened. Therefore the impossible must be possible in spite of appearances. And this is also on a Jodi fabric. Um, it is called Evidence 01002199. <laughs> this was in a murder mystery box, so it was kind of all part of the big murder mystery game that we played. And this uh, this fabric is one of Jody's blood spatter fabrics, but it is only UV activated. So it's pretty spectacular. And if you go back to the video where I showed this finish for the first time, I believe I put a picture in there of... Um, the fabric under UV light. But yes, this is all DMC. There's a few, these are etoiles up here. Um, there's two etoiles and DMC. This needs a frame. I've even picked, I even know which frame I want to order. I just haven't ordered it. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I'm the way that I am, <laughs> but I want this one up for sure. Um, alrighty, next up we had another Zelda homage. So this was started on 
July 21st of 2023 and was finished July 30th of 2023. I don't, I don't really know how that happened. <laughs> um, but this is Mushrooms of Hyrule by Sirius Stitches and that's Sirius spelled S-I-R-I-O-U-S. I should have everybody listed down below um, if you're curious, but these are all fictional mushrooms in the, um, Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom game. So these three were new to the Tears of the Kingdom game, which came out in May of this year. So that was really exciting to me. And all these other ones are in, in both games. And this was also a really special piece because at this point I had finally installed some pegboard and had all of my fancy flosses, um, kind of readily visible to me. And so not every single thread in this, but a really good chunk of this piece um, was like fancy flosses that I pulled as opposed to the, the DMC. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. Really proud of myself. I love following instructions. I love doing called for things. So even though I, I didn't even change the look of it really, I wanted it to look like the original. Um, yeah. <laughs> This was this is a proud moment for me to step out of my shell a little bit. So this is on the Stitch Me 28 count even we or linen, my bad, in my precious. It's a great little parchment tea one. So here's another one, nice little chunk on the bottom here. Lost to the fact that I can't get my life together and finish th fully finish things. Um I don't know where this is gonna go, but I definitely want it up somewhere. Next one, I had three really big finishes in a row. <laughs> it doesn't feel like that happened at the time, but there it is. Um, so on September 1st of 2022, I started the Autumn Lane Stitchery Dark Queen of the Earth project. And I finished that August 6th of 2023. It didn't even go a whole year. I'm so proud of myself still. And here she is. If you haven't seen this going around, um, I know a lot of people are still trying to figure out how they want to, how they want to do this. Um, this was my first fancy lady, uh, my first autumn lane stitch along. There's a lot of gorgeous beads in here. Uh, just, you know, specialty beads, you know, these big fancy beads. I did, um, do a custom, my own customization to her face. It's a combination of, the like second and unused face um I kind of use like the jawline so like kind of her cheekbones down and her eyes I think are from the third unused face and then I kind of merge that with the help of my friend <laughs> a lot of help from my friend um into the the second face because I felt that you know her body is quite uh curvy and so I didn't really love how like angular the face was that didn't really seem uh, consistent to me so and you know it's funny at the time I was kind of like I don't even know if I want to display her like I just I don't know she's just quite a quite a gal but now like getting her out to iron her today I was like I should hang her <laughs> I should hang her so this was on one of the um recommended fabrics this is 32 count um linen and nightshade from under the sea fabrics Next up, we were back on our Bird Crush Club. So on August 20th of 2023, um, from August 20th to August 23rd. Wow, I cranked this out. Um, this is the September bird of the Bird Crush Club. This is the American Goldfinch, um, which is one that actually, a lot of these birds have been West Coast birds. So as an East Coaster, I was like, I don't know what the heck that is, but I get these birds. <laughs> I get these birds on my feeder, so I was very excited about that. So this is the American Goldfinch, and this is also on that 32 count um, vintage country mocha. And this is this is ready to go. I am buying um, modern hoopla frames, um, and I guess actually I can kind of show off one real quick. I have I have some sitting next to me because I got some for Christmas, but um, so yeah, this will be this will be great. So all of these. Um, I'm hoping to finish in these frames. I'm slowly collecting them because they're a little spendy. 
and that's what I'm hoping to replace um, back there. So this is the caramel color. I don't know if this will go on this exact one, but just as an example, you can see the vision. <laughs> You can see the vision. And this is close. This is much closer to being done done than um, many other things. So that is Bird Crush Comb. Perfect. So now we're going to get into all of my Halloween, uh, my 13 stitches of Halloween starts. So first up, uh, the first finish I had was started on September 22nd and finished October 5th. And this is Spells and Potions by Tangled Threads and Things. This was in um, one of the uh, Just Cross Stitch Halloween magazines. I think last year's, I think 2022. Do I have that written on here? Uh, no, that's okay. Um, but yes, and then this Metal Owl box or bookmark I got in... Um, a Halloween box but I have seen them when I was trying to figure out what the stitched area of this was to like double check my own numbers um you can buy these so you, these, these are available it's really cute it is short so I did modify the pattern um a good bit I had to uh remove a number of books in the stack because this bookmark is not tall enough so it's a modification but uh heavily it, it is it is her her their design not mine so and this is probably going to get rehomed to a friend who said she really loved it. So um, that is that. Next up, uh, starting on November 20 or September 26th and finished on uh, October 9th. Not that one, not that one. <laughs> We're on the wrong side of the fabric. This is Unwelcome Sign um, by Franny Ritter Designs. Uh, it says, abandon all hope ye who enter here. And then the tombstones, if you can see, say turn back. I really hope, it looks like the colors are kind of really funky with this camera. I am so sorry. Um, I will figure, I have to learn my phone apparently. But this is a Jackson Fabric Arts 32 count linen um, in sole. And this is 100% organic hemp. It's very soft. It does not feel like any other linen I have. Um, so very cool, very cool to stitch with um, and very vibrant. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is Unwelcome Sign. And then next up on the other side, started on September 23rd and finished on October 10th. This is Nightmare Before Coffee um, by Barefoot Needle Arts. And this will be finished um, into a hooper frame, or I have a frame for it. I've just been painting the frame. Uh, for my sister, little Jack Skellington, all all DMC on both of these, but this does have glow in the dark thread on the turn back, but it does not. It's not really. I've tried to photograph it; it has not really gone well. Perfect. So next up, we have uh, started on September nineteenth and finished on. Well, okay. So sorry, let me backtrack. This is the piece that we missed earlier. <laughs> so first, this was, this piece, hands just a helping, was started October 6, 2022 and finished uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th of 2023. So this is from the Witch's Pantry series by Hands on Design. So this is hands just a helping. And this is stitched on 32 count linen in slate by Fabrics by Stephanie. And then later that year, <laughs> I did the second in the series, which is the eye jar here. So it's got my eyes on you. And so that's also Witch's Pantry by Hands on Design. And that was started September 19th, 2023, finished October 16th, 2023 um, on the same thing. So these are all classic color works, but I did sub one of the grays up here for like a kit just like a floss I had on hand, nothing crazy. So I have one more of these jars to do. <laughs> and those all need to be finished into ornaments. <laughs> any day, any day, I'm sure. Um, perfect. Okay, so next up we have started on October 1st with Shandria. She and I started um, Pirate's Booty by Wrought Iron Stitching. 
And this was in this year's um, just cross-stitch Halloween edition, I do remember. Um, this is, uh, I was finished on October 17th and it's stitched on 32 count Platinum Lugana. Um, I used almost all the called for colors, but I did take a, a thread from a beat from Shandria. She recharted the face, which was like really tan and kind of kept it in the gray tones. So I, I copied, I copied that. Um, and he looks really cute. And there's a coordinating one that was in like the regular October magazine that has a little squirrel and I might have to do that. He might need a buddy. This I think would also, I don't have a Halloween tree, but I'm like, maybe I need to get one because there's all these cute little Halloween patterns. Um, but we've not, we've not made the decision yet. All right. Next up started on September 29th, 2023 and finished on October 19th. This is Hidden Skeleton by Sunny Lofstrom. Um, this is another one with kind of a glow in the dark effect. So again, when I finish this, I think it's in my like heaps of Halloween stitching video. I put a video, a picture of this up, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to limit the video, the photos I'm trying to add. But, um, in darkness, uh, there is a skeleton in here. You can kind of see him. You can see like the little arm bones. If you're looking for him, you can sort of see him, but there's a skeleton that glows in the dark inside the, the ghost, which I love. And this, I think, will definitely be finished into a hoop because it kind of has these elements that sort of fit really well with um, with a hoop. Um, and the boo glows in the dark as well. So that's that, yeah, glow in the dark thread, which was not that fun to stitch with, but very cool for the effect. Um, and this is on 16 count Black Ada from Zweigart. And next up, another piece for a friend which I loved stitching and I don't know why the hoop marks on this are so bad, but this is Mini Rainbow Garden by Una Buena Pieza. Started on October 7th and finished on October 26th. And this is 18 count Black Ada from Zweigart. So here I did do two strands on the 18 count and I think it looks perfectly fine. It doesn't look puffy to me at all. I don't know, maybe it's an Ada versus Linen thing. I'm not sure. But yes, love the little gloopy ghost, love the little grumpy cat. Gorgeous. Love this one. So this one is not my responsibility to finish. She said she would finish it herself. So I'm off the hook there. Okay, so next up, okay. This was a birthday, this was the 2023 birthday start. So on September 4th, 23, I started Forbidden Fiber Co's Body Manor pattern from the clue box and I did finish this um on October 27th um this is 36 count linen in conservatory by Forbidden Fiber Co it was a theme box where we were trying to solve the clues I failed <laughs> you can watch me um really unravel trying to guess uh trying to figure out what the last possible clues could be to solve it but it was turns out it was just a a lucky guess at the end <laughs> It's not clues all the way to the end. Um, but yeah, so this was all Forbidden Fiber Co. flosses that came in the box. Um, and it was a mystery, like stitch along every day you got that. So there's all these little tiny dice in here. These are a little bit off. There's a lot, there's a lot of little fun quirks to this one. I don't know how I want to fully finish this. I've tossed out, it'd be cool to maybe finish it on a clue game board. Um, but that's ambitious to to track down because I would want to find that, you know, I don't want to like buy a new game. So um, maybe I'll keep an eye out on my free cycle group or on Facebook Marketplace or something to see if anyone's trying to get rid of an old clue. Perfect. I can't, I've said perfect a lot this time. I don't, that's a new one. That's not usually my filler phrase, but can't wait. I hope you're not counting. <laughs> So next up, uh, October 22nd, I started Little Hex Teacup by D's 20 Stitches and Uncanny Kari. Uh, this is a trio of patterns. I had a lot of series starts and I finished this October 28th. 
This is on 32 count mystic fabrics in spring breeze and is the called for uh and this 32 count lugana in spring breeze and all the called for threads i did debate using that glow in the dark but i had i'd had my fill by the time i was at this point so um there are three little hexes and i do hope to do them all i don't know why i started this so far to the right The things we do right it's like you measure and measure and measure and then sometimes things are just really funky and over here couldn't couldn't tell you couldn't tell you the math on that one but <laughs> there it is very adorable nice that was a nice quick one <sighs> okay we're getting down to it we're getting down to it so next up oh yeah I had these out of the way is another bird crush club because at this point my goal for the year had been to um finish the bird crush club because it are you know i'm already a year behind and so my next finish was the october bird which was the long-eared owl and this one i stitched on seraphim fabrics 32 count water spirit which i believe was called for for this one um i didn't you know i didn't pull my fabrics out of nowhere and s several of the birds like there were repeated calls so I think Vintage Country Mocha was a called one at one point. This was called for two of them. Um, so yeah, anyway, it worked out really well. I like I liked the way it turned out. So this was a really big one. This was a huge push. This one was like a mental obstacle of like, I don't think I can get the birds done this year if I don't like get this done now. I can't rush it. You know, I did that goldfinch in what, a couple days we saw? Not so, not so with this one. So yes, that's Water Spirit. And then... Um, oh, right. I had two that I will put pictures up of. So my sister had some clothing that was, um, had holes in it from ripping out like a old company logo. And I was like, oh, we should try cross stitching something over it. So I, uh, I did just that. I got these, um, mini packs from Crafty Gurumi on Etsy and I, used waist canvas and stitched these on two of her uh, one's a cardigan one was a polo so on the cardigan I stitched um this tower that looks like you know I, they don't really have names they're like in packs um but the, this little Rapunzel tower you can see her hair coming around and that was a start and finish on November 21st and then on November 22nd I had a start and finish on the polo and I stitched uh the cat Luna from Sailor Moon um, from a different pack and I did goof it was actually not supposed to be th 310 I just was like oh it's a black cat it's 310 but technically it's supposed to be like a really deep gray and then the black back stitching will actually do something but it's all black so he doesn't have a lot of definition to him but it got the job done it covered the hole so those two were quick little stitches and then we got into the wintry season so for the jingle ball this year I took two classes so those were my next two finishes so started on November 14th and finished on December 1st this is season's greetings from the fox family by frosted pumpkin stitchery um so they have like a whole lore of the fox family they've put multiple patterns out from them there's like clementine and anyway so this is like the postcard from these characters that you can also stitch so i chose there was three colorways they offered this is the vintage colorway um yeah vintage i think woodland was the other one yeah anyway and this is i finished it in the finishing class so we sewed trim on we did a flat finish um with custom fabric that they had for the jingle ball um and I used all the called for colors, but I did pull like a gold Krynik that I had in stash for these um, little like Smyrna. I don't know if they're Smyrna crosses for these fancy, for these fancy sparkles, for the sparkles. <laughs> so really love how that came out. And this was on um, twenty eight count fawn by Picture This Plus. There we go. I'm looking. Uh, we're getting down to the bottom here. 
um, which is great. So that's a fully finished that put that one in that pile. And then my other jingle ball piece was C's and greetings from ink circles, sort of a play on the same thing. And there was three charts you could stitch and I chose the ship, um, with the little narwhal doing the ring toss with the wreath. I freaking love it. Um, this was all stitched in classic color works. Um, that I got in the kit and it was on 32 count enchanted linen from Mystic Fabrics and all these batiks were in the kit. So learned this finishing technique of the, the wrap around pillow. I really love it a lot and I hope to get use out of this style of finishing in the future. And I even tried some of the decorative stitching um, that don't look too close at. <laughs> but we are very happy with the finish here. So you can see my finishing on on the bottom of this one looks a lot a lot tighter than that other pillow. So I had a great time with that one and that one was a start on November 28th with a finish on December 2nd. Next, we're back to the water spirit. We're back to the birds. 32 count water spirit linen by Seraphim. This was the violet green swallow. I started this November 30th. Um and finished it December 4th. I, again, I was like, I just have to get over this mental block um, of this really big plank of wood that this bird is sitting on. Um, and I did stitch it one stitch at a time diagonally, which was how it was like kind of described in the, the pattern, how to stitch it. And I think it, the effect was worth it, but phew, I was not feeling it at the time. <laughs> So shout out to anyone who was at the Jingle Ball watching me show this a hundred times <laughs> or um, sat with me on a call in that time because I was enjoying it, but ready to be done. <laughs> so yes, loved this one. This is Bird Crush number 11 and the last one on the Water Spirit by Seraphim. And so now we're just going to race through the last last handful here. So for my 12 days of stitching, this was a project for that. So on November 11th, I started this and finished this on December 5th. This was the first of the Polar Plunge series that I have done. And this is Polar Bear Peak. I love polar bears. They're definitely one of my most favorite animals. Um, and this is all done in cla col classic color works. Yes. <laughs> Um, so I got like, I bought a thread pack and what well, I think I individually ordered them all. Yeah. Um, from one, two, three stitch. And then I ordered, um, the called for fabric in 32 count polar plunge linen, uh, fabrics by Stephanie. So, um, all, I own all six of the patterns and they sh are all supposed to fit on here. I think that's definitely the case. So be on the lookout next year for some more of these, but that polar bear is just darling, just darling. <clears throat> We're down to the last three. We're down to the last three. Okay, next up. <laughs> Started on November 26th and finished on December 8th. This is Flamingo Bells. And this is another, I, a series is maybe a strong word, but there are three patterns that are flamingo puns by Hands On Design. This is a Hands On Design chart as well, as was the Polar Plunge series. I don't know if I said that. That's also Hands On Designs. Like Michelle, Bendy, Hands On Design, Lindy Stitches, like I'm stitching it. <laughs> the, I am out here with these charts. So this is 28 count Crystal Dwarf Lugana fabric from Picture This Plus. And you can see that is sparkly. I love it. Um, and this is, again, a I pulled all uh, fancy threads from Stash. So there are two silks in here. Um, I love the palette. So now that that's all picked out and sorted, and I know I like it, the other two I should just get on with. So yeah, this is Flamingo Bells. And this was started, did I say? Yeah, finished December, or December 8th, started November 26th. And then my triumph, the last of the Bird Crush Club, and you get to see the last of the fabric. 
This is the Red Faced Warbler. Started December 14th, finished December 23rd, made it in before Christmas even by Lindy Stitches. This was the 12th bird in the Bird Crush Club. Um, stitched on 32 count Sea Spray by Seraphim. So this is what I mean. I don't want to cut fabric anymore because this is enough for me to finish it, but it was a pain as a Q-Snap user to stitch with this. And it would have been fine if I had just left the other piece on the other bird, but I cut it off. So that's fine. Anyway, <laughs> so rant at myself. Um, yep, love this. Was very grateful after the owl and the board that the violet swallow was on that... Um, there was not a lot of background going on this. The bird wasn't huge. The background wasn't huge. It was definitely a mercy at the end as I was barreling towards trying to finish all of these. So uh, yes. And then last, not really a climactic finish, but on December 25th on Christmas Day, um, I stitched for my brother. Um, he was inspired by the little stitches I had done on my sister's clothes. So he actually had just like a gray sweatshirt he wanted stitched on. So I, from a different pack, also from Crafty Gurumi, these little minis, I stitched a, um, a character from The Legend of Zelda. This is a guardian from Breath of the Wild. And again, used the 14 count waist canvas on the sweatshirt and stitched that for him. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. I think what's embarrassing about this is looking at the time. This is about how long a regular floss tube goes for me. <laughs> but that is it. That is everything I have for you. Um, that's all the, the whips and the finishes of 2023. It was a very solid year and 2024 is already shaping up to be a very stitchy, heavy year as usual. So we, we pray the stitchy bug stays with us because um, there's a lot to get done. So I am going to take a little break, maybe get a little lunch, and I will be filming a floss tube after this. So hopefully if you're watching, you can go pop over there. Um, like I said, you will see, you know, the pieces over again, but I always keep timestamps. So you're welcome to jump to plans or um, see what I got over the holidays. Um, I visited the Golden Needle in New Braunfels, Texas now. Um, they're not in San Marcos anymore. So a little bit more of a drive, but definitely worth it. And um, some Christmas gifts and things. So yeah, I... <laughs> don't know how to wrap this up. I never do, but thank you so much if you have stuck it out with me. I guess I kind of want to do an emoji. People ask that, right? Um, I don't know. Either like tell me, uh, tell me if there's a chart that you're inspired to go check out from this or uh, tell me a chart that you think I would love if you've uh, seen, now that you've kind of seen where, where my tastes are um, and leave me a Leave me a bird. Leave me some kind of bird because we finished the dang bird crush club. Leave me a bird if you made it this far. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I know there's a million videos out there. So, and which is great. I love the option, love the variety. And anyway, just let it not be unsaid how much I value that you choose to spend time with me. And, you know, put, you know, let me know what you were working on while you were stitching, of course, too. I also want to know. So happiest of wishes for the new year. Hope that you all had a restful, gentle, safe, happy holidays. And I will see you real soon, hopefully. Bye!